I'm Kelleen Bishop, the Preparedness Pro, and today I'm going to show you how to cook with a pressure cooker. It is fabulous. It's one of my favorite things in my entire life, second only maybe to my husband. <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to think about that. But <laughs> no, I absolutely love my pressure cooker. I love how easy it makes things for me. I can make gourmet dishes in no time flat, which is why sometimes when you see these chef competitions, they'll pull out a pressure cooker. It's funny, I've never seen someone really, really use it though. So anyway, we're going to show this one. I'm um, just going to start out a nice cold pressure cooker. And I am just going to throw in a little bit. We're going to make a risotto. Now risotto typically takes about 50 minutes to an hour to make, depending on what you're putting in it. Um, it's kind of a pain in the yin yang to make because you usually have to every 10 minutes stir for a while, add more liquid, etc. We're not going to do any of that nonsense today. We've just got some just the basic ingredients. I'm going to use some dehydrated chopped onions. And I'm going to use white cooking wine. You can also substitute it with uh, white wine vinegar. And I'm going to use some chicken bouillon. I love this particular brand, the Shirley J brand. It's actually the only dry bouillon out there that I have found that actually has chicken in it. Go figure. <laughs> has a nice low sodium flavor as well. Um, you'll see arborio rice or risotto. I won't explain the difference between those two right now, but arborio is risotto. And I'm going to use a little salt, a little garlic, pepper, some fresh ground uh, nutmeg, and then when we're done, we're just going to toss in a good, about a half cup of fresh grated Parmesan cheese. So here we go to start off with. I'm just going to turn my stove just to below high, and we'll throw in the garlic and the dried onions and just a little bit of about two tablespoons of olive oil and two tablespoons of butter. Now the reason why I'm using both, the butter is for the taste, the olive oil is to reduce the foam that you would normally get if you if you didn't put it in a pressure cooker. When you're cooking something really starchy like beans or rice or pasta um, you need that olive oil in there to keep the foam at, at bay. I'm actually going to put in a little bit of pepper right now. And all we're going to do is we're just going to saute the pepper and the onions um, till they get, you know, till the butter's all melted. And then I'm going to actually add my risotto, saute that. And then it's important that whatever the next thing is that I add, that's the flavor that your risotto is going to absorb. So I'm going to add just a half a cup for this whole recipe, a half a cup of the white wine vinegar or the white cooking wine, whichever you want to use. I suppose you could use full-fledged wine, but for this particular recipe, I think it's a little too strong of a taste. All right, this is a nice stainless steel, nice and thick on the bottom. These heat up really quickly, which I love. In fact, I use these just as regular pots as well because they heat things up so quickly, so nicely. All righty. I'm going to take a shot in here and show what I'm... We're just melting the butter. Just going to melt those ingredients together. As soon as I get the butter melted, I'm going to go ahead and add the risotto. All right, so now we've melted the butter. And I'm just going to turn this down a little bit. We don't want to burn our butter. Now I'm going to put in the risotto, just two cups of risotto. And I want to coat the risotto in that wonderfully flavored butter with my garlic and onions and a little bit of pepper. I just want to coat that risotto all over. Kind of saute the, the kernels here. Well, I'm going to do that until the bottom of my pan feels it, it's just not as smooth because that tells me that the starch has started laying down there. So not only is the white cooking wine going to flavor my risotto, but it's also going to deglaze my pan, the bottom of it. And it's going to get my little bits of wonderfully flavored, um, what, what, I don't know what you call it, just the coating on the bottom of the pan, but there's a lot of flavor in that. Okay, we're going to go ahead and add this. You want to just be, it's going to steam up a little bit. Heaven. I'm in heaven. Oh, it smells so good right now. 
Um, you have to pay extra to actually be able to watch this and smell at the same time. And it's just, it's beyond what you can afford right now, I'm sure. Simply because we don't have the technology yet. <laughs> okay, so now we've absorbed the white cooking wine and the bottom of my pan is really nice and slick now. So I'm going to go ahead and add four cups. Um, I actually have four and a half cups in here because I want to reserve a half cup of the chicken broth. And it doesn't matter if it's not completely blended when I, when I make it out of that broth because it's going to get perfectly blended. I just want to make sure I still have a half cup here. Um, it's going to get perfectly blended with the flavors and everything when I'm done cooking. All right, so we want to reserve a half cup. Stir this. Let's bring this back up to high because we want to see a little bit of bubbling going on. So this is what it looks like now. You've got your risotto underneath here, chicken broth. It's going to be nicely flavored. You know, one of the things that I love about my pressure cookers is I can make fabulous chicken broth. I like to use shredded chicken in a lot of different recipes. And so I'll just take it from the freezer, put it into the pan, add a couple of cups of water so that I have a source of the steam, and all of that chicken just keeps getting beat up and it makes the most delicious broth. And once the broth has cooled down, I just put it in a Ziploc bag, one of those nice sturdy Ziploc bags, and put it in the freezer. And I can pop it in the pan again when I'm ready for my next dish. It's wonderful. Okay, so we're seeing a little bit of simmering going on in the pan. If you want to take a look at this. Getting a little bit of simmering. I actually want to see a good boil before I put the lid on in this case. Now, not all um, pressure cooker recipes are like that. But in this case, I want to see a little, a little bit more action down there before I put the lid on. When we actually put the lid on here, we're going to cook for a whopping seven minutes. That's it. As soon as I get it to high pressure, I'm cooking it for seven minutes. I'll take seven minutes over 50 minutes to an hour any day. Okay, this is starting to look good. I'm going to put just a smidge of salt in here. I like to use real salt as opposed to salt where all the nutrients are taken out. Okay, see we're getting a little bit of steam here now. So all I do is line up the arrow on the lid with the arrow that's on the handle. And so be it. Now it's locked. And you can already hear, if we had a super powered mic, you can already start hearing as soon as I've locked this a little bit of hissing noise here. And what will happen is as the pressure builds up, this will keep coming up. That would be low pressure and this would be high pressure. What I want to have, see it's already popping up now, what I want to have is two bars, so I want high pressure. As Soon as it comes up to that high pressure, I'm going to turn my heat way down because I don't need it up that high to maintain that pressure. In fact, that's one of the reasons why I love my pressure cooker is if I'm having to cook with a butane can, um, you know, something where my supplies are limited, I could actually just bring this uh, pressure cooker up to high heat, remove it from the stove, wrap it up in a nice thick towel and it will continue to cook for an hour. Okay, we only need seven minutes of cooking time on this risotto and it's a good thing because it smells really really good right now and I want to dig in. We don't start the clock though until it gets up to the pressure that we want and at this rate we're already at low pressure, we'll be there in like another 30 seconds is all. So, um, I'll just wait. <laughs> Monopoly, anybody? Okay, we're already there, we're at two bars here. So now I'm going to turn this down and what I like to do just to make sure it's going to be a, a stabilized pressure is I turn it down just a halfway. Looks like it's doing just fine. So now I'm going to turn it down to just between three and two. The last thing that I want to have happen with the risotto is to lose all my pressure and have to bring it back up. So every, everything's doing fine. It's, it's not hissing too loudly. If it were though, if I was building up too much pressure, I would simply press down on this to release some of the pressure. So that's all that happens. This isn't too hot to handle. Just press it, uh, push it down to release some of the pressure. Or you could just use a wooden spoon like so. Okay, so now we're well beyond the two bars. So I'm going to turn this down even just a little bit more. And now we wait a whopping seven minutes. 
typically while that's going on, I set the table or I make the other side dishes or warm up the meat dish or whatever it is that I'm doing. But that's all this guy needs is seven minutes. We are going to have absolutely perfect risotto. We'll be right back in seven minutes. Okay, we're just about finished here. See the lid is actually staying down. It's still making a little bit of a hissing noise, um, but the pressure indicator is staying down now. So I'm going to carefully open the lid. Now the nice thing, one of the safety features is I would not be able to get this lid open if I still had um, pressure. Okay, so now let's look and see what we've got here. Okay, it's nice and thick. Oh, it's beautiful. Okay, so now what we do is we pour in uh, that last half cup of chicken broth and I'm going to grind some fresh nutmeg in here. You never can have enough fresh nutmeg in. It's so fabulous. Yum, 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 yum. Okay. I'm just going to add. Recipe calls for about a quarter cup of freshly grated. You can do four cheeses. I like the Italian mix you can get at Costco. But for me, there's just never enough cheese. I'm going to put in about a half cup. You really don't want to push it beyond that because uh, you'll get uh, too tough of a texture after your risotto sits for a while. So we're going to stir it up. This is perfect. This is exactly the texture you want. Oh my gosh, this is going to be so yummy. Whenever I make this for my husband, he always asks, what did you do wrong? <laughs> it's kind of like the girl who wonders what's up when her husband gives her flowers. What's the matter? Okay, that's done. We're just going to dish it up. That's the absolute perfect consistency. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you, Lorna Sass. It's exactly the consistency that you want. Nice and hot. You can smell the garlic. Mm. Heaven. Hope you enjoy it. See you next time. That's delicious. It swell. <laughs> Change the world I'd be your angel